And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Madison, Georgia, Morgan County High School, as we've got a great night of Peach State basketball ahead for you. I'm Marcus Burnett here on SUV TV. This matchup, following two matchups, are presented by Augusta Basketball. You can follow them at AUGBball on Twitter. They've got a pulse on all things Augusta Hoops, which is a big reason why it's an easy segue for this Laney matchup versus Morgan County. We've got the girls version for you here, just tipped off. Laney with the ball first, they're trying to get it inside. That's going to be off the leg of number 54, Jasmine Holman. So it will go over to the host Morgan County Lady Bulldogs as they get it in the hands of Brown. Brown's going to get it ahead. Stop and pop, just off the mark. Rebound in traffic. Doesn't take us very long to get our first tie up of the game. As we have Sydney Nash. Uh, she was tied up there with uh, Jemiah Bauman, I believe. Still a zero to zero ball game. Stolen away by Laney. They're gonna run ahead. Some inadvertent contact there as Nash collided with Aaliyah Collier. Collier went to the deck. Tough, tough thing to see if you're a Laney fan there. Obviously some contact that caused Collier to fall, but uh, no foul caught there. That was inadvertent contact. So ball will go over to Morgan County as we're still scoreless here. Just tipped off, we appreciate you joining us. Sorry for the delays, the JV games ran a little longer, so we, we're we on air. It may have been a little later, but still right on time for good basketball as that shot's gonna be off the mark. It'll be last touched by Morgan County. It's going to go over to the Lady Wildcats of Laney. Red's one of my favorite colors. Anybody that's in that boat with me, this is a pretty good matchup all over that pass. There is Davis. Davis gonna take it the other way. Be Laney's ball. That last steal was by Abrea Bronner. So Laney with the ball as both teams trying to get settled. Scrappy defense in your face is being faced by both of them. So that can take a little bit longer for the adjustment period as that ball is going to be knocked out of bounds. We'll go back over to Morgan County. We've had back and forth, back and forth here early on. Maybe not as many buckets as fans of offense might like to see, but anytime you have two teams that are this intense on defense, you might have to temper your expectations in terms of offensive production early on. Laney has the ball, baseline drive. That's going to be cut off. Nash with the steal. We're going to count it the other way. They've got a layup opportunity, but that's going to have to be earned. Those two points we're talking about from the free throw line is Alexis Pumpkin Brown is going to be sent to the charity stripe after that foul by Jasmine Holloman. So Holloman's first foul is going to send Alexis Brown to the free throw line. Brown and her lineage. No strangers here in Morgan County or really around the state. Uh, her brother, Tukey Brown, you'll be able to see him in the nightcap as the boys take on Laney. Here you see Alexis knocking down the first free throw. We've got our first point of the game. So nice job of making the freebies free. Brown makes it a two to nothing ball game in favor of Morgan County. They get it to the corner now, getting inside. Tough shot, in and out. Good looking shot there by Holloman. Won't go down, that was a rebound by Bryant. Here comes Brown the other way. Brown slows up, this laney defense stays in your face, very intense. Brown misses that first shot. One of the things that Coach Josh Reeves of Morgan County talked about before the game is that while Laney presses, his team relies on a pressure defense as well. So something's got to give that three-pointers off the mark. And I'll tell you what, one thing we see early on, every rebound will be contested. The 50-50 balls will be tough to come away with as we've seen that play early on. So Morgan County has it. Here's Nash. She's going to pull. That's contested. A little bit too strong on it. That's going to be last touched by number 23 of Laney. That's the Shea Benjamin. So ball off of the fingers of Benjamin. It will stay with Morgan County. 
beautiful facility here in Madison, Georgia. That's a steal. Should be an easy layup drill on the other end for Laney. Yes, sir, it is. Number four, easy layup, Aubrey Bronner. So Bonner makes it a two to two ball game. Let's look at both of these teams coming into this matchup. Laney with a big win over local Augusta rival Butler uh, last night. Nice to be able to take that kind of momentum in a similar atmosphere. Pressure field, standing room only. Something that this Laney program has experience in both on the boys and girls side of the coin. Meanwhile, Morgan County, no stranger to big matchups as well. As you see Coach Josh Reeves pacing the sideline. He says he feels real good about some of his young pieces. Lost a couple key stones last year due to graduation, but feels good about the group that he's got now. Giving him reason for optimism there is Jasmine Holloman. She makes it. Holloman gets the steal and one. Collier. Collier makes it a six to two ball game. Collier was uh, recognized as the player of the game in that win versus Butler on yesterday evening. A 29.5 assist and 13 rebound stat line really makes the player of the game choice a no brainer. She has a, a chance for a three point play the hard way here. She's got the front end, free throw on the way. That's going to be just short. Six to two ball game. Here's Brown. She's got two defenders in her way. Doesn't matter with the weight room move. Alexis Pumpkin Brown. So I guess one three point play deserves another as that's going to send Brown to the free throw line. She was two of two on her first trip to the strike. Uh, we'll see what she's able to do here. And pull Morgan County to within one. That one won't go down. Another rebound inside there by Haldeman of Laney. Still early, but she's been eating glass thus far. Laney trying to work it inside. Good use of the pivot and getting the kind roll. Number 11, that's Jemiah Bauman. Bauman, one of the captains for this Laney Lady Wildcats team. She makes it eight to four. Lady Wildcats will bring it the other way. That ball, that ball partially deflected, but Holloman is able to get a shot up. Leaves that one just short. Saved by Collier. Unfortunately for her, right to Nash. Brown, she's been stirring a lot of things up. Give her another and one opportunity. You've heard the basketball phrase, the straw that stirs the drink, if you will. Case in point, Brown has been doing just that here in this game, and she makes it six to eight. Morgan County, no different than Laney, looks to really use that defense to have it translate into offense. We haven't had to tell Brown twice to go here in this game. He's been one speed and so far it's worked for Morgan County as they pull to within one. Having a seat there for the Lady Bulldogs is going to be number 55, Jeteria Bryant. Uh, checking into the game for her first action. Looks like number 25 there, that's Fortune. Another steal there, and the finish counted Tatiana Davis. Davis with her second steal of the game. She makes it nine to eight, Morgan County with a one point advantage. Coming right back at you there is Laney. No foul called on that play, that shot's off the mark by Benjamin. And some of the Morgan County crowd label that shot an air ball. A little bit of contact there. No whistle, so back over to Morgan County as they've got a one-point advantage and slight momentum. Deep two-pointer. Off the mark there by Davis. Lady Wildcats pushing the other way. Nice job of using the rim and the finish off the window. Collier playing like a captain out there. As Collier puts Laney back up by one. Tatiana Davis has it. Davis over to Brown, Brown to Nash, Nash. Nice little baseline jumper, won't go. Laney tries to rebound, they're not out of trouble just yet though. And we're gonna have a tie up. Jump ball opportunity is going to go the way of Laney. 
Three minutes, 25 seconds left to play here in the first quarter again. This presentation of SUV TV sponsored by Augusta Basketball. AUG B-Ball is where Chad Cook tells his favorite Augusta basketball stories. You can follow them at AUG B-Ball on Twitter. A lot of tradition and history on the Augusta side of things as we see Collier continuing to try to play her way into the history books. Augusta basketball does a great job of keeping a uh, pulse of basketball in that area. Meanwhile, Brown's coming. Thought she might have had her third three-point play opportunity. Can't get the front end to go, so she'll have to get both of them the traditional way there at the free throw line. Brown has been very active here. And, you know, talked about her obviously being the sister of Tukey Brown, and you can see a lot of similarities in their game as far as how hard they both play, uh, the respective roles that they play for their teams. But again, some of what they do is just a common thread amongst uh, a lot of players that you'll see featured tonight, and that's just the ability to play hard and do whatever it takes for their team to get the W. So you'll see plenty of that on display tonight. So a 12 to 10 ball game. Laney still leads by two. It's been back and forth, back and forth. We're under the three-minute mark here in the first quarter. Nice job of being aggressive on the catch, getting the step and the finish to Shea Benjamin. Benjamin makes it a four-point advantage, but not for long. As Fortune has a good fortune on that play, she makes it 12 to 14 with that layup. Fortune just checked in about two minutes ago, not taking taking her long to be productive. The dimes dropped off. Can't get the roll there on the layup for Bauman. Ball's going to be lost out of bounds. They say it was touched by Laney, much to the disagreement of Aubrey Bonner, who says she did not touch it. I'm, I'm in agreement with her, but the official saw something else. It's a lot easier to make that call from my perspective without it being such a bang-bang play. Official called what he thought was best. Thought it was a case of the ball not lying there. Laney had a near steal, but they do find it in their hands. All's well that ends well for the Wildcats. Here's Benjamin. She's going to get it over to Williams. Williams able to pick up the pieces, finishing where she left off again. It's Benjamin. Benjamin will make it 12 to 16. Neither one of these teams giving the other one room to breathe after a made bucket. Benjamin kicks it out. Here's Bonner. Bonner with the first three-pointer of the game for Laney. And the crowd that made the trip from Augusta, happy to see that one go down. It's a seven-point advantage. As Davis trying to weave through traffic, gets it inside. Going to get called for the hop there. Tried to use the body and kind of initiate the contact there. Not a bad attempt there by the Morgan County player. That's number 42. We'll have to verify our roster on that one. Uh, no number corresponding to that name, so we'll get that squared away for you. We're approaching the minute mark. One minute, five seconds to be exact. And I think we're going to have a five-second violation. So the ball will go back over to Morgan County. Sydney Nash has it. This is Davis. Davis working inside. Fortune, no sir, says Benjamin. She snatches that away. Save attempt by Williams, unable to keep it in, so it will go back over to Morgan County. 52.4 seconds left. This game has been fun. It's been scrappy, and it hasn't been a sloppy first quarter as it just flew by. Tickling the, the net there on that one. Tatiana Davis, nice little stop and pop mid-range jumper. You don't see that often enough here at the high school level. Davis shows you it's not a lost start in her book. Nice move, shiftiness. Floater is going to send Collier to the free throw line. It's 
Carter's going to make her second trip to the free throw line, still directing traffic out there, making sure everybody knows where they need to be, what they need to do, leading by example there. As we've got a commercial break, we want to take some time to recognize a couple of our sponsors. The presenting sponsor of tonight's game, Augusta Basketball. You can check them out at augbball.blogspot.com as well as on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, at augbball on Twitter and Instagram. As well as the ranks. Attention fans, download the ranks, which is the first fan-driven ranking system where your opinion matters. Rate, comment, and petition for your favorite high school basketball players. The ranks is available on iPhone and iPad. As Collier set to go back to the free throw line, it's, it's been a pleasure being able to know and work with the folks over at Augusta Basketball. You really get a, a great pipeline of the different stories and, and some of the things that have taken place throughout the years. You know, I had a great chat with Chad Cook earlier today just talking about the Laney Butler matchup that took place yesterday and how it was really, you know, some of the best Augusta basketball, really the best high school matchup in Augusta since uh, the Will Avery days uh, back then. You know, basketball never stops, neither does its history. So, valuable resource there. Back to the action. It's a 20 to 14 ball game after that call, your free throw. Nearly stolen. Brown continues to attack. She earns another trip to the free throw line. As a result, the Laney contingent that are here on site didn't like that foul call. Definitely looked like a little bit of contact there, though. So Brown going to go to the free throw line. 20 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Good to go on the first. I'll make it 20 to 15. Second one on the way, count it. So 16 to 20. Brown pulls Morgan County to within four. Collier in the, coming quickly the other way. No good on that shot. Tatiana Davis with the rebound. Gets it out of there quickly. Pass intended for Brown. Brown with the athletic catch and, of course, the finish. The question of what Brown can do for you has been answered in resounding fashion here in the first quarter. We're going to take a break. When we get back, we'll bring you second quarter action. It's 18 to 20. Laney leads by two here in Madison, Georgia. Welcome back here to Madison, Georgia, home of the Morgan County High School Bulldogs. And this SUV TV presentation presented by Augusta Basketball. I'm, I love being able to cover basketball in some of the nicest venues and more unique venues that you'll see uh, across the country and in the Peach State. Each one has its own fabric, its own identity. And, Got to say, I'm loving the digs here at Morgan County High School tonight. I think as far as mascots go, in my opinion, Bulldogs, one of the more conventional ones, but one of the best ones out there. Collier says, never mind the mascot talk. She gets another steal. She misses. Williams on the follow-up attempt. Can't get the first one to go, but she will go to the line to cash in. Free throw on the way, off the mark. Williams, the freshman, 5'9 freshman here. For Coach Smart and the Laney girl splits a pair of free throws. 
So that'll make it 18 to 21. Mid-range J, no good for Brown. Long rebounds, gonna be tipped out. They'll get another opportunity. Here's Fortune trying to work inside. Nice kiss off the window. Timmy Duncan like with the shot inside. Nice crossover, dropping it off. Can't convert, she's not happy with herself. There was Bowman, nice assist, or, uh, or potential assist there. Uh, by Collier, Bowman unable to finish, but when you play ball like this Laney team, you know the opportunities will continue to be there. Nice body language by our teammates. You didn't see any anybody fuss or, or have any fallout after that missed layup. You know, players know when they miss layups. It's not something anybody's happy about, but the best thing your teammates can do is get back on defense and try to get another opportunity. Exactly what Laney did. Collier can't cash in. Fortune continues her strong play. Morgan County has it. Now they'll get it in the hands. It's number 12, that's Brittany Belzer. Belzer splitting through the defense. As we see the referee, they were kind of giving some instruction to the Laney Wildcat cheerleading squad. As far as their proximity to the court, but ball back in play. Tyra Smith unable to get that one to go. Here's Collier the other way. Now in the hands of Bonham. Six minutes, 24 seconds and counting left to play here in the second quarter. One point advantage for the Laney Wildcats. If you're in the half court set for either one of these teams, you kind of got to use it to get a, a, a breather. Something that is not very easy to get with the up and down pace of this game and the pressure that each team sees on a regular basis. Benjamin's going to be fouled on that attempt. And as you can see, we've got standing room only in this gym. Upstairs, downstairs, doesn't matter. Got to love a packed house. And the basketball has not disappointed up to this point, and I, I don't expect it to at all. We have another substitution in for Morgan County. Number 24, that's Autumn Woodard. Also checking back into the game for Laney is number 11, Jemiah Bauman, as Jessica Williams has a seat. Benjamin good on the free throw, so that'll make it 23 to 20. Both of these teams going at it. Brown, again, using that body. And she's gonna get another foul call. You know, you don't expect the lady fan base to like, to like it, per se. But from a basketball standpoint, Brown is doing exactly what she needs to do. She's making sure she takes it right to the defender, kind of limits their reach by taking it right at their chest. But then she's also drawing enough contact to be able to earn these trips to the free throw line so far. Now Coach Reeves talked about going into this game, how he really wanted to make sure his team could not only handle the pressure, but play with control. It's one thing to get it across the, the timeline, get it across half court. And then it's another thing to play with control. And Brown has been able to help them do that so far here in this game. She pulls them to within one with that trip to the free throw line, 22 to 23. Nice jump off there by Collier. Bowman unable to finish that one inside. Collier set to inbound the ball there along the baseline. Never had to play with one of those masks that Cargers playing with, but it's not hindering her there. She get that, gets that assist attempt to Deshea Benjamin, who finishes. Well, I've always credited players who can play with, with that sort of mask. Obviously, it's a safety precaution. You've got to be able to have it there. Uh, you're either fresh off an injury or trying to make sure you know, you're, you're done with that rehab process. But Sometimes the smallest thing can throw you off in a sport. It can be as small as a wristband or whatever the case might be, let alone a mask that's covering the majority of your face. And Collier's doing a great job playing with it. Hasn't hindered her one bit. 
or if it has, she's doing a great job camouflaging it. She gets that to a cutting Bonner. Bonner going to be sent to the free throw line. So you look at Laney uh, coming into this game. They're actually ranked number 22 in the state uh, by Max Preps. So that free throw is going to be off the mark. It's a 22 to 26 game after that first free throw was made. Laney comes into the contest 13 and two uh, overall here this season, undefeated in the region. Stolen, taken away by the Bulldogs. Nice job of running that three on one break. Brown's gonna take it all the way herself. The assist by Nash, finished by Brown. Been a redundant first half as far as that's concerned because Brown has done plenty of that. Just under five minutes left to play in the second quarter. Willing and dealing there as Collier has the ball knocked out of bounds as Brown knocks that off of her knee. Brown doing, is doing whatever it takes to try to get this W. And in the meanwhile, she's the people's champ here at Morgan County as well. Definitely making sure the crowd is into it. Deep three in the corner. Davis off the mark. This crowd was ready to explode. Had she knocked that one down, it's off the mark. Good sportsmanship there by both teams. They help each other up. Both teams going as hard as possible after this W. Four minutes, 40 seconds and counting left to play here in this second quarter. Benjamin had the ball. She got it out of the corner. Going to be a traveling violation there. That's going to go against number two, Jasmine Bartlett. So it'll go over to Morgan County. It's 26 to 24. The Bulldogs can tie the game or take the lead here on this possession with a three. Nash is going to look for the tie. She can't get it. Davis follows it up. A little bit of contact. No, no foul call. Good defense by Benjamin. Benjamin trying to step through. Brown takes the cookies, goes the other way, drops it off to Davis. Davis. Tried to finish with the layup before she got it. Nice hustle there by the Lady Wildcats going into a group of cheerleaders in the first row there was Jasmine Bartlett. Meanwhile, it will stay with Morgan County. 4.03 left to play here in this second quarter. Davis feeds it inside, easy sail off, and Deuce as a result, Jeteria Bryant makes it a 26 to 26 ball game here in the second quarter. Beautiful night for basketball here in the Peach State. Benjamin, nice little move. The jump stop and the dime. All about the Benjamins, baby, on that play. She drops it off and able to finish. There is Bowman. Laney showing faith in Bowman. Bowman missed a couple freebies. But coming right back, you see a little bit of razzle-dazzle there by Davis. She's fouled by Bowman and will go to the free throw line. 28 to 26. Two-point advantage for Laney. Coach Reeves describing Tatiana Davis as one of his do-it-all players. She can score, knock down the jumper, slash, gets to the rack. And we've seen Exhibits A, B, and C of that so far here in this first half. As she makes it a 28 to 28 ball game after knocking down both of, both of those free throws. And a laney turnover. It's gonna give it back to Morgan County. Three minutes, 25 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Davis over to Brown. Brown to Belser, Belser, skip pass, risky, a lot of air under that given this Laney defense, but Brown comes away with it. Good pass, Davis, wide open three, 
little too strong, but Fortune too strong on the follow-up attempt. Now it's in the hands of Benjamin. Good place for it to be as far as Laney is concerned. Picks up her dribble, but gets it over to Bonner. Jasmine Bartlett has it. So we've got two minutes, 40 seconds of county left to play here in the first half. Bartlett turns the corner. Meet Fortune right there. A brick wall in the form of Fortune. Nice defense, arm straight up. Active hands by Bonner. She tips that one away. Now Laney has numbers. They've got a three-on-two break. Benjamin drops it to Collier. Collier is going to get it over to Bartlett, who's fouled. So Bartlett will go to the free throw line. Bartlett will go to the free throw line here to see if she can break this tie at 28 apiece here with 2 minutes, 21 seconds here in the second quarter. Bartlett good on the first free throw, 29-28. And Laney win last night was by a score of 74 to 38. And while good teams play on the same level regardless of last game or who they're playing against, you always wonder about you know some of the game to game culture shock that, shock that you can experience when a team wins by such a lopsided victory the night before or the game before. Then you have to kind of you know crank it up a little bit to be able to go against a much tougher opponent. No, it appears no transition or no lackluster performance here by Laney as they responded so far in the first half and they have had no choice but to because. Alexis Pumpkin Brown is not playing any games tonight as she splashes that three pointer from the corner. She makes it 29 to 31. Davis, that stop and pop J, can't get this one to go. Rebound pulled out of there by Bartlett. Bartlett ahead to Benjamin. Benjamin looking to make something happen. Can't get it to go with the left. Bowman with the strong rebound tries to finish. No good on the follow, but she'll go to the free throw line. So Bowman has definitely picked things up as of late. She's been able to finish inside when she's been given the opportunity to do so the past few times. And here, nothing helps like being able to go to the free throw line and knock a few down. These rims aren't loyal on that one as that one bounces around and won't stay for it. One minute, 36 seconds left to play. here in the second quarter. Again, tonight's game is presented by Augusta Basketball. Be sure to check out their Region Race 2015, which is a weekly YouTube show detailing the Augusta area's high school teams, progress through the region and postseason play. The show is also released every Thursday and can be found at Augusta Basketball's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash cookchad08. We'll be able to have that displayed across the screen during one of our next timeouts. So if you missed it there, we'll be sure to get your back on it. Meanwhile, there's a steal by Bartlett. 29 to 31 ball game as we are under the minute 30 mark. 125 to be exact. Here's Collier. Nice move. Drops it off inside. Bowman is going to touch it last. Bowman pleads her case saying it was touched by the Bulldogs. The official. Mine made up. So Collier was unable to keep the mask on. Not sure whether it was an issue with the adhesive or whether she just chose to uh, discard of it. All over that pass, that one was underthrown, Tebow-like almost. Trying to step in and take the charge there. Drawing the foul. Now St. Collier to the free throw line. I believe that one's going to go against number 12, Brittany Belzer. So another trip to the free throw line for Collier. She's shown what a lot of good players show, and that's the ability to get to the free throw line. Not happy with herself at missing that first try. But she'll have another one coming shortly. But in addition to her ability to, to be able to score, and get others involved. Sometimes being able to get to the free throw line on the road 
in a, in a hostile environment, good sportsmanship field environment, but still a hostile one nonetheless. Getting in the free throw line can be the difference between hopping on the bus with a loss and with the W. She makes the second one go, 30 to 31 ball game. Bartlett with another steal, her third steal just in the past two minutes. Williams gonna try a tray ball. Off the mark, long rebound brought in by Fortune, keeps the pivot. Ball gonna be kicked out of bounds there by Collier. Easy to see with their play while Collier is one of the captains here on this Laney team. Under the minute mark now, about 45 seconds to play. Brown goes between the legs of Fortune. Davis able to save the day. She has it poked away, but Nash has it. Weaving through traffic, the floater game. Looks like we're gonna be called for a moving screen against Fortune. I don't think she even did it intentionally, but she did kind of help move the defender out of the way. So that, that floater by Alexis Brown is negated by the foul call. Coach Reeves, I don't think he appreciates that. Doesn't appreciate the call, but I think now he's more focused on being able to get his substitution in. And he's not going to be able to get his sub in, not happy about it. And coach is saying, man, you, you, you took away the floater with that call. At least let me get my sub in. We'll have to wait till the next dead ball. We're under 30 seconds now, 30 to 31, second quarter. Laney with the one-point advantage. Sorry, Morgan County with the one-point advantage. It's been so back and forth. Collier, easy finish inside as you see the applause after the shot. Laney with another one-point advantage. Davis, good if it goes. Thought we might have had one off the window. We will not. So, you're watching SUV TV. This matchup presented by Augusta Basketball Halftime. It's a one-point advantage for the Lady Wildcats of Laney. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this special message from Crossover. Crossover Intelligence for basketball can save you hours of time. We break down and stat your game film for you and act as your video coordinator by giving you searchable clips, advanced statistics, shot charts, and a lot of other great info that you can access from any PC or through our iPad application. Just upload your video through the Crossover website and 24 hours later, your film will be completely indexed and tagged. Each play will become its own video clip, allowing you to search the footage for anything you'd like. Here we'll take a look at all three pointers that were made in the fourth quarter. All of your offensive and defensive sets can also be tagged, so you can view the appropriate clips and determine which plays are achieving the best results. You can add any clip to a playlist or highlight reel and share everything with your players or assistant coaches. Crossover will also provide you with all of the numbers from each game, including complete player stats for both teams and advanced metrics like these. We even take the shooting numbers a step further with an interactive shot chart that lets you visualize the data. Filter by player, quarter, makes or misses and click on any shot to watch the corresponding video. Crossover Intelligence will keep you from spending hours in the film room and get you back to actually coaching. Together, we can turn smarter video into more wins for your team. That's the crossover effect. Crossover
Because everything I do needs to be fast. I run nationwide. On the blazing fast 4G LTE T-Mobile network. I pay 40 bucks. No surprises. I am Metro. Because I have to be fast. And fast wins. I'm riding on that nationwide T-Mobile network. It's not rocket science. Fast nationwide for $40. Period.
And welcome back here to the action as we get ready to start the second half. It's a one point advantage here for the visiting Lady Wildcats of Laney. For those that are just joining us for the second half, if you missed the first half, I apologize. I, I, I feel sorry for you, it was a great half, but glass is half full because you can be able to enjoy what will be the deciding half here in this one as we see another dime being dropped by Collier, another finish by Benjamin. Benjamin continues her solid play here in this game as well. Steal by Laney, here's Hallman. She gets it to Collier. Collier, a rare mishap as the ball goes between the legs and it'll go back over to Morgan County. Collier, a leader in multiple facets here for this Laney ball club, not only by example, but also vocally when necessary. You can see her getting her teammates in the right place, making sure they focus on the task at hand and execute. It's a big reason why they have a three-point advantage here and a tough place to get a win. It's even tougher when you've got players like number 23 for Morgan County, Alexis Brown, having the game she's having so far. She had 17 points in the first half. Hallman with the offensive rebound. Nice job of keeping the arm straight up by Fortune. The effort pays off. Here's Davis coming the other way, finishing with the left. Yes, sir. Tatiana Davis. Another player you want to keep your eye on throughout this game. If you saw the first half, you, all, you already know why. For those just joining us, it's plays like that that she's been able to make. Another finish inside there. It's Jasmine Hallman. She'll make it 34 to 36. Sorry, 33 to 36. Three point advantage for Laney. Fortune gets it to Brown. Brown uses the screen. Three pointer on the way. Just short. Fortune another rebound. Shot blocked by Collier. Stepping on the out of bounds line there is Tyra Smith. So that's going to send it back over to Laney. Five minutes, 56 seconds left to play here in this third quarter. Appreciate you joining us here on SUV TV. Both of these Laney versus Morgan County matchups presented by Augusta Basketball. Follow them on Twitter at AUGB Ball if you aren't currently. Call your working inside. First couple tries doesn't pay off. Third time's not a charm. Now it's in the hands of Davis. Davis hesitates for a second, changes speeds. Nice defense there by Benjamin. Nash weaving through traffic, has that one knocked away though. And Bowman finally able to reel it in. Nice contest there by Fortune. Fortune does a great job of playing defense without fouling. Weaving through traffic and taking the clothesline. Well, not a clothesline, definitely a shot to the head there uh, by Brown. Haldeman with the good sportsmanship Sportsmanship helping her up after the foul. If you're Laney, you have to make sure uh, that you make uh, Brown work for those points on the inside. If you're just going to give her freebies uncontested, you don't send her to the foul, foul line and let her know you're in there, it's going to be a very long day at the office. She knocks down the first free throw. Makes it 34 to 36. It's a two point advantage. Second free throw is good. 35 to 36. Neither one of these teams would have it any other way. I think the largest margin uh, so far in this game has been four points at most. But it's been one points, two points, back and forth. It's a one-point game in favor of Laney. Morgan County trying to change that. They'll show a little patience. Benjamin over to Bartlett. Bartlett for three. No good. Long rebound. Reeled in by Bowman. Bowman's going to get it to Collier. Collier can't get the bounce. Rebound inside there. That was Tara Smith. It's 
Collier going to pick up a cheap one there. You can see Coach from the bench telling her why pick that foul up there. The ball was already in the other team's possession. And it wasn't even an instance to where she could really tie that one up. She's too valuable, valuable of a player uh, to give up that foul unnecessarily. Nowhere to go along the baseline, but she finds a way to tightrope it, does Brown. Now Fortune nice move inside, but can't get it to go. Collier with the rebound. Nobody else. Wolf picked away by Brown, but get that out of here, says Bowman. So Bowman playing Johnny on the spot there. Good heads up play by Brown. Bowman there to negate the effort. I thought we had standing room only when the game started, but the crowd has only gotten larger <laughs> since we tipped this game off, and I expect we'll probably even get more uh, once the boys' game starts also. Nice job of finishing there. It's Jemiah Bowman, another captain uh, here for this Laney Wildcat squad. Bowman's last bucket makes it 35 to 38. Four minutes, four seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Nice take, too strong on the layup. There was Belzer. Collier gonna get it ahead. Nice job of running the floor. Easy layup drill there. Albrea Bonner. Bonner makes it 40 to 35. Nash with the high arching shot. It's no good. Benjamin with the rebound. And Laney with a chance to possibly get their largest lead of the night here on this possession. Collier's trying to do just that. Bartlett going to take the open mid-range. Too short. Another rebound for Fortune. Nice pass there. That was coverage that Darrell Rebus would be proud of there by Bonner. And she steals that one away, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout. So we're going to take this time to recognize some of our sponsors. The presenting sponsor of tonight's matchup, matchup as I mentioned, Augusta Basketball. Be sure to check out augbball.blogspot.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook. And last but not least, at AUGB Ball on Twitter and Instagram. Chad Cook and crew do a great job covering the sport that we love there in the Augusta area. Also, Court Fred, it is the first fan-driven ranking app. Be sure to download it on your iPad or iPhone. Your opinion matters. Use that app to be able to voice it. Also, Crossover. Coaches, let them save you time, which is always a commodity. They break down your game film for you. They cross over do the work so you can put that time towards other things. So we are back from out of the timeout. It's a five-point advantage for the visiting Laney Wildcats. You see Sidney Nash there guarding Jemiah Bowman. Steal, Belzer. Nice pass and good job of just locating the ball there by Autumn Woodard. Great job there. Nice pass ahead by Belzer and the finish by Woodard. Woodard, sometimes you'll see a player when they can't see that ball at first or it's on the wrong side, they'll panic and kind of turn themselves around and get caught up in the footing and trip. Nice patience there by Woodard as she just really took her time, found the ball on the right side and got the easy layup drill. She made it 37 to 40 with that layup. Collier set to inbound the ball. She gets it over to Bartlett. A lot of air under that pass, and Nash takes it away accordingly. Bartlett challenges, and that's going to send Sydney Nash to the free throw line, the 5'7 junior. I believe that'll be her first trip to the charity stripe here in this game. Two minutes, 41 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Morgan County Bulldogs, they got a record of, per max preps, a record of nine and three. 
They're undefeated in their region. Both of these schools, uh, Class 3A, Region 8 is the Region 4 of Morgan County. Count the second free throw as well. So we've got a 39 to 40 ball game. It's a one point advantage for Laney. Wide open three pointer. Can't give too many of those up and showing you why is Bonner. Another steal. Benjamin trying to sidestep. She does, plays through the contact. It's all about the Benjamin baby with another bucket. Six point advantage now for Laney. Cookies taken. Bowman, easy layup on the other end. And Coach Reeves has to get a timeout as this Laney crowd is in full effect. Let's look at the replay sponsored by Augusta Basketball as you see Bowman taking the cookies. An easy lay in. Pressure bus pipes, and you're going to see pressure the entire game from this Laney squad. As you've got five hands up, or five fingers up, I should say. You see it in the screen. Laney's here in full effect. But we know Morgan County is going to try and respond. We'll take a timeout. When we get back, we'll bring you more of this SUBT matchup presented by Augusta Basketball. back from the timeout. Hey, I've got a lot of people on hand with me to watch this matchup. Sorry you couldn't make it on site, but appreciate you joining us here on SUV TV to still be able to catch the action. Didn't take long for Alexis Pumpkin Brown and Morgan County to respond out of that timeout as that deuce goes for the Bulldogs. They pull it to within six. Had a chance to pull it to within four there, but that ball's gonna be lost out of bounds. Unable to keep the handle on it there was number 12, Brittany Belzer. So back over to Bartlett. The sophomore will bring it up. Laney leads by six. Benjamin trying to add to it. Fall away jumper. Can't get the roll. Put back attempt, good by Collier. I love how Collier plays. Traveling violation, so Collier gets the bucket, goes back to cut that drive off from Tatiana Davis. Then helps Davis up. Love players that play hard, play intense, bring the best out in their opponents, but also show good sportsmanship. As Collier says, let me give you a help up there, Davis. And they're gonna go right back at it the next play. Gotta love it. Davis looking to push again. Left to right, right to left. Can't get the finish. Stealing it away there, good scrappy defense by Belzer. She gets them another opportunity and now Fortune is going to slow it down a little bit, gets it in the hands of Davis. Davis risky pass over to Brown, but she's able to come away with it. Rare miscue for her as she loses it. Collier, a little winded as she pushes. She'll get a chance to kind of catch her breath there at the free throw line. And when I say winded, you can kind of see her just slowing up just a little bit, it's all relative because a winded Leah Collier is better than a lot, 100%. Unlike being able to go to the free throw line, kind of catch your breath for a second in a game that's been up and down, both teams pressuring each other. Each bucket hard to come by. Collier misses that first free throw, and you can tell she's one of those players. Obviously, you know, coaches are gonna coach, but if she makes a mistake, she's the first one to get on herself. As she was with that missed free throw. Had a chance to make it a double digit advantage for Laney. Misses that first one. Can split with the second. Splashes that one through to do just that. So 41 to 50. Davis making it look easy button. Easy button like as far as how she got to the third level. Couldn't finish. Benjamin comes the other way. Bowman's 
tried to split through. That ball was knocked away by Nash. Now Brown has it. Morgan County with numbers. Threading the needle to Belzer. It was Brown. Belzer unable to get it to go. Eighteen point eight seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Beautiful gymnasium here on the campus of Morgan County High School. Brown set to inbound the ball there along the baseline. Mid-range J, no roll there. Benjamin with the rebound, gets it in the hands of Bowman. Bartlett cross court. Good if it goes, it will not. Call your follow attempt, no good. So, three quarters out of the way. Final quarter will be up shortly. Thanks for watching SUV TV and this matchup presented by Augusta Basketball. We'll be back after this quarter timeout. And the fourth quarter is underway. Nine point advantage for the visiting Laney Wildcats. Not the way they wanted to start off the first quarter. Turnover there, miscommunication. Somebody zigged when they should have zagged. Ball goes back over to Morgan County. As it is, this is not a region matchup, but a very important matchup for multiple reasons. One, no matter who you're playing, region or non-region, both teams want to come away with a win, but both of these teams ranked in the top 30 in the state, undefeated in their respective regions. So when it comes to iron sharpening iron, you want to be able to stay on the winning path. Nice pass ahead. Davis catches it in stride, and it's a layup from there. Tatiana Davis running the floor. Makes it 43 to 50. Morgan County pulls to within seven. Collier with it up top. She's guarded by Brown, gonna put it on the deck. No good. A lot of air under that pass to Davis, but she comes down with it, hesitates. The Hezo and the bucket, Tatiana Davis. Gotta love the hesitation move right there. Morgan County edges that much closer. Forty-five to fifty. Ball will be Morgan County's. Belzer gets it to Davis. Davis loses it out of bounds. You can see both teams in different stretches. You know, fatigue kind of setting in a little bit. When you play this kind of game at, at a high level, defense being at a high level this entire game, yeah, it's got to take a lot out of you. You put so much out on defense, then it takes so much effort to be able to score against two very good defensive teams. 
Benjamin continues her solid play. And she gets the kiss off the glass and the roll, it stays down. 45 to 52. Ball out of bounds, it will stay with Morgan County. Davis inbound the ball. Tatiana Davis, only a sophomore. This Morgan County team, you look at Davis as a sophomore, you look at Alexis Pumpkin Brown as a junior. So while you're focused on doing what you can this year, you know the, the future ahead is bright. Five forty-eight and counting. Seven point advantage for Laney. Bartlett with it. Two of the better sophomore guards you'll find in Bartlett for Morgan County, and as well as Davis. Sorry, Bartlett for Laney, Davis for Morgan County. Going to get called for the traveling violation there. That will send it back to the Bulldogs. Checking into the game is Talia Adams. Having a seat is going to be number 42, Tyra Smith. Autumn Woodard to inbound it to get it to Belzer. Nice job of getting a hand on it there by Deshea Benjamin. Now Brown has it. You can see Collier trying to push it to her left. Back out to Belzer. Bartlett working real hard to get a five second count there. Doesn't get the five second count. Does get the steal though. And great hustle by Davis, but Bartlett had reinforcements in Bonner. So Bonner pushes it to a nine point advantage. Davis gonna try to cut it down to six. No good on the three pointer. Long rebound by Collier. She's got Bonner running. Bounce pass and the finish. Laney is showing you why they are so hard to beat. They keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming. As we look back at this instant replay sponsored by Augusta Basketball, you see Collier, she got the steal. It was just a matter of time before she gave her the fundamental bounce pass. Could have been a potential and one there. No and one called, but this Laney crowd likes it just enough with the deuce. You're watching SUV TV presented by Augusta Basketball. We'll be back shortly. And we are back from the timeout. It is an 11 point advantage for Laney. When both of these teams met earlier in the season, it was a close game then as well. It was a 62 to 60 victory in favor of Laney. That was in Augusta. Morgan County trying to settle the score here tonight on their home floor. But they've got an 11 point deficit staring them in the face as well as a dwindling clock that Laney is running a good minute off of with that possession alone, and it results in an easy layup for Bartlett, assist by Benjamin. Thirteen point advantage now. Brown weaving through, can't finish with the left. All gonna be poked out of bounds there by the Bulldogs, so it'll go back over to Laney. It's been a great game for Alexis Pumpkin Brown, but she's trying to finish the mission, find a way to close this gap. Not an impossible, um, impossible task, but not an easy one either, as we've got under 350 left to play. But plays like that will help Morgan County get back into the game. As they get the ball there, no harm done. Deficit stays at 13, but they've got to score and score relatively quickly. 
with this Laney team having the ability to run some ball, run some clock with each possession. Nash, quick shot. Ball's loose. Collier hustling to get to it. Nash ends up with it. Second time is a charm on that one. That's persistence pays off. They pull it to within 11. Bartlett has it up top for Laney. Over to Carger. Last possession. Definitely an exaggeration on my end as far as a, a full minute being run off the clock, but they definitely ran a good 30 to 35 seconds off the clock the last possession, took their time, and got a layup at the end of it. Here we've seen them use about a good 30 seconds of clock as well, and they still retain possession, so they're doing a good job of really managing this game over the past two minutes or so. No need to rush. You want to take some time to look at some of our sponsors here for this game. The presenting sponsor, Augusta Basketball. It's where Chad Cook tells his favorite Augusta basketball stories. You can check out Monday through Friday his daily quote unquote big old posts at augbball.blogspot.com. Chad picks a game or topic and shares thoughts as well as video footage. Also be able to check out Region Roundup, which is a preview of upcoming region games. The first roundup was shared Friday, January 9th at augbball.blogspot.com. Be sure to follow those guys on Twitter and Instagram at augbball.com as well. You'll be glad you did. 47 to 58, two minutes, 55 seconds. You have to play here in the fourth quarter. Brown with the steal. And one. Pumpkin Brown has done that a lot more in the first half than we saw her do in the second half uh, with the laning defense making the adjustments, but when it's just her and the defender, she's going to initiate that contact, use that body. Worst case scenario, she might miss and be in a position to get the rebound. But more times than not, we've seen her draw the foul and be able to finish through the contact. Just like we did that play, 50 to 58. Jumping the pass there. Was Collier is going to be turned over. Layup line, Tatiana Davis. We've got a six point game with 2.30 left. Morgan County trying to make one late push. Bowman. Tough shot right there. She's going to go to the free throw line. And this is one of those games, both coaches knew it coming in. It would be one of those games that will really prepare you for March and your respective March to Macon. Very formidable opponents. Tough defense to be able to score and stay under control against. And here we've got a late game situation to where Laney is going to have to go to the free throw line and be able to knock down some key ones to hold on to this one. It will not be given to them by Morgan County as the past couple minutes have shown. Bowman says no problem, we'll earn it. But she's two for two there from the free throw line, making it 52 to 60. Just over two minutes left to play here in the first fourth quarter. Tough shot there by Davis, off the mark. To Shea Benjamin with the rebound, now it's to Barton. Nearly some miscommunication there as Bartlett didn't know whether she'd grab it. Benjamin thought she would. But all's well that ends well, I guess, as Bowman standing under the rim waiting for it. Great job of hustling and getting back as it's taken away by Autumn Woodard. Eight-point game. Davis frustrated. Woodard trying to get that pass to her. It was a little too tall. I think there was some miscommunication. It appeared that Davis was trying to go to the ball while Woodard was trying to throw it and lead her ahead. That turnover costly at this point in the game as it is an eight-point deficit. One minute, 43 seconds and counting left to play. As coach is going to get a timeout.
Also want to take a look at Ford Cred and their app, The Ranks. Attention fans, download The Ranks, which is the first fan-driven ranking system where your opinion matters. Rate, comment, and petition for your favorite high school basketball players. The Ranks is available on iPhone and iPad. Crossover intelligence for basketball can save coaches hours of time. They break down and stat game film for you, giving you searchable clips, advanced statistics, and an interactive shot chart. Stop wasting time in the film room and visit www.crossover.com today to get started. That's crossover with a K dot com. So we are done with the timeout, 52 to 60 ball game. A minute 34 and counting left to play. Lane is saying, hey, we ran some clock, but we also know we kind of got to continue to distance ourselves. They come and get an easy bucket out of that timeout there. Sydney Nash set to inbound the ball. She gets it in. Brown in the corner. Trying to get that in the, in the Smith. Stolen by Benjamin. Benjamin, I'll take it all the way myself. Leaves it just short, though. Here's Davis. Davis ahead to Brown. Brown not done scoring yet. She pulls Morgan County to within eight. Nearly stolen there by Smith. Benjamin able to retain possession. Bartlett going to take a three that I'm sure Coach can't be happy about. I'm sure even the Lady fans are ready to say, what are you doing? A very basketball-savvy audience. But all's well that ends well as it goes in off the glass. Definitely one of those no, 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 yes, yes, yes shots there by Bartlett. 56 to 65. We've got about 30 seconds left in the game. Bells are fouled there. And Coach Reeves wants to get a timeout. We'll take one with him. Don't go anywhere as we have the final 31 seconds. Morgan County versus Laney. And we are back to the action out of the timeout. Morgan County going to extend the game. They are not in the penalty. They are still just one foul away from it being a penalty situation. This coach is going to sub in to Leah Adams. Touchdown pass. Benjamin trying to chase it down. Not a bad idea there by Laney. That could have been an easy layup, but Collier with too strong of an arm for her own good there on that one. Now, as you see her, her and Benjamin kind of exchanged my badge there. So they lead by nine, 29.4 seconds left to play here in the game. Brown going to try a three, and she'll get called for a travel. See Brown shake her head there and say, yep. Strong effort uh, by Alexis Brown here today. As it appears, this one is dwindling down to an end. But Morgan County still going to make sure they send Laney to the free throw line to finish this one from there. 23 seconds left, it's a nine point game.
But on the first free throw, there's Benjamin. Second one is good as well. So 56 to 67. Under 20 seconds now. Brown going to try the mid-range. Count it. And Morgan County going to continue to foul. 11.8 seconds left to play. I would tell you to stick with us for the next game, but that should already be a given. The same high level of play, intensity, and great matchup and atmosphere that we've seen in the girls' game will be sure to carry over to this boys' matchup as you have players along the likes of Tukey Brown and Jalen Ingram for Morgan County, as well as Zepp Jasper, Deshaun Brooks, Christian Keeling, Colin Young, and just a very talented and deep squad for Laney. It will definitely be a solid matchup, to say the least. The steal, the do-it-yourself play to end the game there. Tyra Smith gets the steal and the three. Ending on a strong note. Final score, 61 to 67. We appreciate you joining us here on SUV TV. This matchup presented by Augusta Basketball. Be sure to give them a follow. You can check them out online at augbball.blogspot.com as well as on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to check them out. Appreciate you joining us here. Stick with us as we've got a great matchup on the boys' side as well. Morgan County versus Laney. <laughs>